Hi everyone, this is Anandita Paulus and in today's video I want to talk about something radical that is radical gratitude. So what is radical gratitude and how do we practice radical gratitude and more importantly why even practice radical gratitude. So this is what I mean by radical gratitude. Now I don't know maybe some other teachers are using this term radical gratitude and meaning something else but this is just my personal experience and observation and this is how personally I feel about radical gratitude. So gratitude has been a part of my spiritual practice for a really long time, for many years actually. And in fact, if you have been following my videos, I have mentioned about the practice of maintaining a gratitude journal and just the practice, the attitude of gratitude in your daily life as one of the key elements of any spiritual practice. And I've made several videos on this channel as well, on the practice of gratitude. So what is radical gratitude and how is it different from the gratitude practice that I spoke about previously? Here is the key difference. So in the past, my daily practice of gratitude involved writing page after page for you know different things in my life that I'm really grateful for. In my videos in the past, I have mentioned just writing maybe three to five things, maybe a list of three or five things every morning or right before going to bed. Write down three things that you're grateful for today. And it's all right even if you're repeating the same thing every day because you are still grateful for it. And if you find something new, that's great too. So that used to be my personal practice for many years until lately when I started realizing this. And this realization actually started happening more and more after I heard the audiobook The Untethered Soul by Michael Singer. And in fact, I did a book review on this particular book. If you haven't seen that video already, you can check that out right here. The link is also below in the description. You can check it out from there as well. And the teachings of this book greatly touched me at many levels and I already spoke about that in my other video. But one thing that I really picked up from there and in all honesty, it was not just from there that I picked up from. I have started realizing this in my spiritual path over the last one year or so, that it is easy to be grateful for the things which are working out for us, for the things that are going exactly according to our plans, exactly the way we want them to go. It is very easy to be grateful for those things. But what about the things which don't go according to our plans? Are we able to be grateful for even those things? Now, of course, logically thinking, you might be questioning why in the world should we be grateful for the things which are not working out according to our plans? What is there to be so happy and you know, grateful for? And here is the thing. The limited amount of data that our human minds have gathered, based on that limited data, we have created this mental you know, belief system, mental structure or a model of the world, so to speak where certain things are good and certain things are bad. So certain experiences, you've labeled them as good and certain experiences, you've labeled them as bad. And now, out of the millions of different things that could possibly happen to you in this universe, you are only open to the experiences that you have labeled as good. And you don't even know what is out there. There could be millions and millions of experiences out there in the universe. And really, like this universe isn't, unlimited infinite place and in this infinite place we have personally in this specific lifetime gathered maybe a handful of data and based on that handful of information we have decided that this is good and this is bad I should only be experiencing this and I should never be experiencing that and the unknown is always scary so nobody wants to experience that so based on our limited data which is logically speaking a uh, quite statistically insignificant, if you ask me. And so based on the statistically insignificant data, we have decided how our life needs to be. And so we are only grateful for those limited number of things that we know and we trust to be good for us. And in fact, breaking news, well, maybe not so much of a breaking news. I'm pretty sure all of us have had, in some point in time, had the experience when we got something which we thought we really wanted and after receiving it we realized that 
you know, this is not exactly what I had in mind. I had a completely different picture about this thing. I had no idea this is how it's going to turn out. I thought this was going to be one way, but it turned out to be completely different. And from a distance, it seemed like this, but it was actually not like that at all. So, so many times, I'm sure at least one time in our life, we have all experienced this, that we really desperately crave for something. And when we get that, it turns out to be kind of underwhelming, not as amazing as we thought, as we made it out in our minds. That just proves that our minds have so limited data and we allow ourselves to be governed by this mind. So if our mind tells us, hey, this is really bad for you, or this is so boring, I don't want to be here, you immediately want to leave. If your mind tells you, oh, this is so great, I'm having a great time, you believe it and you think that, oh yeah, I want to stay here for as long as possible. So it's like our minds have become our gurus and we are constantly just living our life based on whatever our mind is telling us. If the mind tells us it is good, it is good. If the mind tells us bad, it's bad. And the mind actually has very, very, very limited data. So when we are only grateful for the things that go our way, that's a very limited number of things to be grateful for. And in fact, that is one of the main reasons why a lot of people, when they start gratitude journaling, they have a hard time to come up with three things. I mean, that is one of the things I tell to people in my videos, just come up with three things or maybe five things if you are feeling really adventurous, five things or three things that you are really grateful for today. And sometimes after doing it for a day or two, people already start having a hard time coming up with three things that they're grateful for. And this is one of the primary reasons because they are only grateful for things that happen exactly their way. So that means that if your morning coffee is exactly the way you like it, only then you are grateful for it. If it is a little bit different, your gratitude is not there so much. So if it is sunny, you are grateful. If it is snowy, you are not. And as you can very well understand from this conversation that, well, there are hundreds of possibilities, thousands in fact of possibilities that could be happening every single day to you. But because you have only defined a certain amount of limited things to for which you will be grateful for, you kind of limit yourself or you restrict yourself from all the other possibilities, from even allowing yourself to experience all the other possibilities. And also, when we are saying that we are not grateful for an event just because it didn't go our way, we are saying that this universe, this particular moment in time, which took over 13 billion years to be exactly the way it is, that all of creation was imperfect because this moment was not according to your plan because this moment was not how you wanted it to be. So everything that happened up until then in the universe, everything that led to that particular moment, all of that was incorrect or imperfect or wrong just because it was not according to your plan. So that is a pretty, I would say, naive or even stupid way to look at life, to think that all of evolution was wrong just because something didn't go according to your plans. So that brings us to an important question. Why is it so difficult to be grateful for unpleasant experiences? I mean, some of you might be thinking, oh, it's a no brainer. I mean, it's unpleasant, you don't want it. That's why it is so difficult. Well, yes, of course. But one of the reasons if you look a little bit closer is, you know, take the analogy. Let's say you go to a theater to watch one of the famous Shakespearean tragedies of all times, Romeo and Juliet, let's say. I mean, it's a romantic tragedy. So you go there, you cry your eyes out. It really deeply moves you, their love story. And then later on, your friends ask, how was the theater? How did you like it? You said it was so amazing. It was so sad. I, fe I cried my eyes out while watching and I cried even for three days later on. It was so emotional, it was so deeply touching. And I'm planning to go watch it again. And I think you guys should join me. So that is how you're going to react to a theater that you just watched, which was a tragedy. However, if that tragedy was your life, you would be traumatized for life. You would be scarred emotionally for life. You would be probably going to a therapist for life. Uh, of course, in Romeo and Juliet, they died. But let's just pick any other tragedy where something really, really bad happens to the main characters. If something like that would have happened to you, you would have probably been traumatized for life. So the reason we are not traumatized by 
watching a movie or a theater is because it is not personal. You are not identified with those characters. Yes, we identify to a certain extent, so we cry when they cry, we laugh when they laugh. But on another level, we do know that it's not personal. It's not happening to you. It's not your life. It's not my life. So that's why you're not traumatized for life. You allow those experiences to touch you deeply and then move on. They are not stuck there. On the contrary, if it would be your own life happening to you, first of all, you resist these experiences. You don't even allow yourself to come anything close to experiencing unpleasant, uncomfortable emotions. So the minute your mind tells you, oh, this is going to be a difficult situation, oh, this is too bad, immediately there is resistance. Immediately you want to avoid that situation completely. Immediately there is this energetic wall that you build up so as to protect yourself from the unknown, from God knows what might be happening to me. So there is that resistance in life. So when something is happening in life, we are constantly filtering it out through our belief system. And whenever our belief systems tell us that this is not good for you, we immediately build up this energetic bridge and we literally resist or push that event away from us as much as possible. And because we are resisting it, we are actually keeping it in place. We are actually giving it our power, our energy. And it might just sound very contradictory, but the more you resist, the more it actually persists. And so when something bad is happening to us, something unpleasant is happening to us, we are resisting it and so it persists. And that's why we don't allow those experiences or those emotions to touch us deeply and to move on. We are not able to move on from them. And that's why we are scarred for life. That's why people are sometimes dealing with traumas. That is one of the reasons that we are not able to move on is because now we have identified, now it is about me and my life. Why is this happening to me? What have I done to deserve this? Why not somebody else? I am a good person, why is this happening to me? Or if something bad is happening to your loved ones, what did he or she deserve? What did he or she do to deserve this? She is such a good person or he's such a great person. In no way they should be going through this. So now it all becomes very personal. And that's why you can go watch a tragedy at the theater and enjoy it and watch it again and again and recommend others to watch it. But when it comes to your own life, you are not able to have the same experience just touch you, move you, and then just let it go because now you are resisting it. And that is what makes it so difficult to practice radical gratitude because radical gratitude involves letting go of your ego self to a certain extent. I believe that even if you are practicing gratitude just in its regular form where you are grateful for the things which are actually going according to your plans, even that is an amazing, amazing spiritual practice to have on a daily basis. And if you want to take it up another notch, I would highly recommend practicing radical gratitude. And by now, I believe it's pretty clear to you that by radical gratitude, I mean being grateful for the things that didn't work out to your plans, that didn't feel very pleasant while they were happening to you. And you will see that the more you start practicing radical gratitude, the less conditional your joy becomes in life, the more open you become to experiencing everything in life. Because remember those walls I was talking about, the resisting, the energetic resistance that you create? These energetic walls that you create, they not only prevent you from experiencing a bad experience, but they also prevent you from experiencing good experiences as well. So when these energetic blockages start dissolving, because the attachment that you have to your ego self, you know, that makes everything very personal. This is about me, this is about my problems, my life. What have I done to deserve this? It is no more personal anymore. So when you let go of that personal, then you are really able to enjoy everything just like you would be enjoying a tragedy show or a movie or a theater without getting scarred for life. You can experience the depth and richness of every emotion without fearing it, without resisting it. And you can truly experience gratitude from a whole different level. When you can start seeing every moment to be perfect, just the way it is, that's radical gratitude. And that's also radical acceptance. And when you start living life from that place, or at least 
try to practice that on a daily basis you will see a huge shift in the way you react to life in the way you respond to life because i believe that the main purpose of spiritual practices is not for changing things outside of you not for controlling things outside of you but for controlling what's going on within you and it's really for controlling your own response to life because life just happens it's not happening because of you or for you it's just happening that's just the way it is and the more you can start letting go of the personal in everything the more actually you start enjoying everything the more the world literally becomes your oyster so to speak and you actually start enjoying this journey so i hope today's video made sense if you like this video then like it and leave your comment below and let me know what was your top take away from this video and consider sharing it with your friends and family who might benefit from it as well and if you haven't already then subscribe to my channel i'll talk to you soon bye for now